All right. Ian, what's going on with this announcement from Analog for the pocket? Well, Analog Pocket uh, announced that they were going to have an announcement uh, of an announcement on Monday. Well, it, it was it wasn't three tiered. It was an announcement of an announcement. They 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 well they announced that there was going to be an announcement on Monday, and oh, then they on Monday they an, that they, was an announcement. That was a tweet. I don't count that as an announcement. And then on Monday they announced that next week you will be able to pre order. I personally don't care. Some people were uh, a little upset about it. Um, I think if they had not said that, if they had just said. Uh, 8 a.m. the 27th, and uh, they had put them up for sale, okay. and everyone missed them, they would have been upset about it. Okay, let's explain what the analog pocket is. I'm getting there, Patrick. Okay. Um, so, we already have talked about the pocket. The analog pocket, running over the basics that we've been over before, it is a handheld system that, uh, will, that runs on FPGA, and will play uh, out of the box. It will run Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games. Um, at pre-order time, uh, once pre-orders launch next week, the uh, there will be a Game Gear um, attachment available. There are Neo Geo Pocket and uh, Atari Lynx adapters yes! in the works. In the works, but they are not being put up for pre-order on the third. Oh, the Game Gear one is on the website. That's what I said. The Game oh, yeah, Gear okay. 1 is, the other two are not. Um, the system itself, like most uh, previous analog systems, you know, is aiming for basically the best fidelity and picture you can get out of these systems. Um, and it's a fairly slick looking piece of hardware. Uh, when it was announced initially, the start, select, and home buttons were way up higher on the system, which looked like it could be crowding yeah. and not particularly great. They did, uh, they, the first thing they announced was two design changes. They moved those buttons down. And the analog dock, which is an accessory that you can purchase for this system that will allow you to hook it up to your TV. Um, has a recess in it now where the system will fit a bit more snugly. When they first showed that dock, it was a flat surface and you docked it. And as a person who works in game retail and has to do repairs on all sorts of things, that looked like a perfect opportunity to crack and destroy ports because there would have been no support. Sure. So they, so they said, okay, well, let's think about this more and, and let's tighten up the design, which is why you, that's why you have this long period. Plus with COVID, obviously... That, that probably didn't help as well, potentially, for production. So, back when they announced it, they also said that it would be used for music making. It is going to... Inc so, all of the... I think all of the analog systems so far... Well, at least the Mega SG and the, um, the uh, Super NT um, had games built into them there is no necessarily no uh, so far it doesn't look like there's a game built into this but it is giving you access to nano loop which is a popular game boy music production uh software i'm more familiar with lsdj but nano loop is great i've used nano loop i love it um so that's very cool that they're going to that they're you know kind of trying to market this to the chiptune scene as well you think it'll do well just by default because hey we get we have sound libraries built into this. Uh, I, I think I think it's it, it it's not going to hurt it. Sure. Um. Well, oh, 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 the, the wonderful Kevtris is a big fan of chiptune stuff. Yes. So he's probably like, yeah, we'll put this in here because he's done his own chiptune stuff in the past. So. So one of the things that was mentioned that I thought was actually very very cool is they're not um they're not taking the nano loop thing lightly it's not just something that they're they're throwing in there they are also releasing a slew of um midi connective cables so that you can hook this up and get it talking with other um software this is very exciting to me um in the pictures alone it shows it you know um hooking up with a, a teenage engineering op1 which i have it shows it uh hooked up to some of the pocket operators um and it has, you know, they're, they're going to be putting out a pocket to MIDI USB-A cable, uh, an actual MIDI cable, pocket to analog sync cable. For someone who's not familiar with, with MIDI, you want to explain real quick? What? Yeah, basically it allows it to talk. So it can send instructions to other instruments or other instruments can send instructions to it. Back and forth for playing different uh, sounds from one of the other. You program like the song on one, this, you can put the output of a sound to like, a, like, a, like the sound on a keyboard, things like that. You can, it, it's like your, it's, it's like your, your workshop basically. It's so part, yeah, it's part of your workshop. It's very cool. Um, yeah, it, it it basically becomes part of your flow. You can actually yeah. work it into your hardware uh, sound setup. 
a uh, couple other things that were mentioned. Um, the original display mode stuff is very cool. Um, so the uh, Pocket has a 615 PPI display. It's an insanely high fidelity display, high three quality and half, display. Three and a half inch. Three and a half Good inch. Size. It's ten what? times the um, ten times the resolution of the original Game Boy screen. Um, what's cool though is that they have because you're working with a screen like that they can mimic the screens of all the systems that you're playing so you can make it look like a Game Boy screen and it will replicate all of the weird little quirks you'll be able to see all the little pixels you know the little the, lines you, and all things. the lines and stuff that's beautiful um, yeah uh, so that's actually very neat and I'm interested in they, they said they've even got kind of figured out how to replicate the backlight of you know certain systems it'll be very interesting to to me to see how that plays out because some games built in the effects of <clears throat> having the backlight so um so obviously a ton of thought went into this why wouldn't it? all the analog products they put the thought and time into this here display is made from gorilla glass so it's really strong there's never been a display this advanced in a video game system i'll take their word for it because so far analogs delivered on everything they've promised uh for the most part uh, yeah, resolution is 1600 times 1440 resolution. Um, one thing uh, I'll mention, uh, there's a there's an extra FPGA included. Yes, extra FPGA included, and they are actively looking for people to develop on it. They... Uh, Turbo Express! Oh. Yeah, that's gonna, that, that, that's gonna happen. Uh, it says right on the website, Pocket is designed for FPGA development. We added a second dedicated FPGA just for developers to develop and port their own cores. You'll get access to analogs, proprietary hardware, and scalers. So they're they're they're, they're giving you there. they're giving you the pat on. on the ass. Come uh, on! And then I think one of the cooler things that was mentioned um, is that they are partnering with GB Studio, which is a drag and drop Game Boy uh, creation game game creation yeah. studio. Um, and you can uh, you'll be able to uh, create um, proprietary pocket file formats and create your own games, drop them and share them on this system. I'd be really interested in seeing what, obviously when it comes out, what the limitations of this stuff, what can you actually do with this? You know, like how, how customizable these games are. I'm really interested to see like what, what that's like. I mean, I, I don't, Drag and drop should not should not scare people. Obviously, you know, the, I I have drop. a feeling that GB Studio, uh, just looking at it, is one of those things where if you wanted to do drag and drop, you could. But it also looks like you can get under the hood and do some actual programming in there too. So you can probably do whatever your skill will allow you to do. Yeah, I'm not too familiar with GB Studio. Um, I'll look it up now. So that's very cool. When you take a step back, and I don't want to sound like I'm I'm I, I I'm blowing the unit but i am very excited for this um it it, it really is a it, it's not just a game boy player it's also um it's a creation suite you've got music creation yeah. you've got game creation you've got fpga development um and with fpga development who knows what else you might end up be playing on this you know within the realm of legality uh but there's lots of things that will be doable for this so um fingers crossed i will certainly be like this is this is one of those things where i'm not getting paid to say it i am going to be trying to get one of these next monday yeah absolutely um and the, I mean, the, the, I can't picture these being limited. This would probably be open pre-order. Well, please. they here's uh, my. This is another thing that I think with with the delay, with the delay in announcing, you know, pre-orders, possibly COVID is uh, is, oh, sure. is, is is part of it. But there was a very very strong reaction to this when they when it came out, and I'm not sure they were expecting people to be this excited about just it. Just the tweet of the announcement of this was got a huge uh, I, reaction. I, yeah. I can only hope, fingers crossed, that this is not a super limited thing and that they will look at the pre-orders and um, develop to pre-order or, or produce to yes, pre-order. They'll produce amount. around that. I think that I think that would be fingers crossed. I think that would be kosher in, in this in this case. Because obviously the last two were, were not limited, the, the Super NT and the Mega SG. You can um, still buy the Mega SG, but the Super NT is gone and then the original NT um Noir the, is not out yet, right? The what? The, the the updated NT Noir is not up out yet. It's but, sold out. Oh is it? Yeah it's sold out. It's gone. Oh so you can buy you can buy the You could buy it but it was gone. Oh Dude. Yeah, that that's sold out. I don't know why I didn't buy the mini one. Still, I don't. I should have bought the original mini NT. So, uh, but that has you know, a, a, not, a, to kind of bring up um, another company, uh, it it does kind of create some bad blood. This weird Mondo, you know, 
uh, style, you know, these things are hyper limited. Um, I think they realized that, you know, limited run went through a problem like this when they did uh, their, um, you know, when they first started with the Vita games and the PS4 games, sure. it was, you had to be there at 9 a.m. and, you know, hope you got it. When they went to the Switch games, they did the smart thing. They manufactured to pre-order i think analog probably realizes that there is no negative to having these things in people's hands and hopefully now that after so many units they realize that there is a market for this and it's going to sell and hopefully oh. they will create as i understand when you're first starting out you create a small amount of something because you're not sure how well it's going to sell now they know how well this is going to sell Th this is why this is an interesting product here because there was always other ways to play with Hyperkin and the Retrons. There was always a way to play the console games. There wasn't a fantastic way to play these handhelds with the original game and to carry it around. Um, you you could you can buy little crappy little you know ROM players, but who the hell wants that? Some people want the real thing. So they come out with this, and when you look at this, this is an awesome hybrid between um, a Game Boy Pocket and the SP and how it's designed. It's like it's a brilliant cross design of both. In terms of the square layout, the four buttons, the the, the left and right uh, triggers, but it has the, the screen like like a fixed screen like a Game Boy uh, pocket. Um, yeah, my only concern is how comfortable those triggers will be to use if there's when there's a cartridge in there. I was actually looking at the back of the system earlier, and it does look like there's a slight recess for the cartridge to go into. But I'm just wondering if my fingertips are going to be butting up against the side of the cartridge as I'm trying to press those trigger buttons. I don't see why it would. If, if it was fine on the SP, they probably went along the same lines of that, right? Um, but I see what you're saying. But no, I, I absolutely... The SP cartridge went on the bottom. There was no cartridge anywhere at the top. If you look at the back of the system, you'll see, see what I'm saying. I, I, I feel like there's there's a potential here for, for it to get cramped. Look at the back of the system. Look at where the cartridge goes in. I need a picture. Oh, there it is. And then you... So I, I, it looks like the cartridge will be set far enough back that your fingers aren't constantly there's bumping a There's into. a little recess thing here. Yes. So, I, think, I think they thought of that. There's, there's a little... There's a little um, air... Like, there's a little <laughs> yeah, I didn't really, really notice the recess until today. Yeah, I, th I think... Oh, oh, concave and convex buttons. Thank uh, you so yeah. much. I, I Thank knew you, you were going to bring that Thank up. you. Why is this not a thing anymore? It's the easiest thing to do in any controller. Thank you. The sense of feel is very important. It's my strongest sense. Sorry. That's very important uh, there. So, yeah. So, you basically get six usable buttons. The D-pad is probably n nice. Can't picture not being nice. And they put the, they put the start and, and home buttons, whatever, on the way bottom. So, you, so your grubby fingers don't hit it by accident. They, they took care of all the design elements that were potentially troublesome there. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much well, all I've got to say on it. Price I mean, is $200. We didn't mention that. I think that's I, that's about where I thought it was going to be, being that they're... I thought that's what they mentioned last year. Oh, they did? Yeah, 200 and the dock is going to be 100 Um, so Because their consoles are, are 180 for the Mega SG, and, and there's a lot going into this, obviously, a lot uh, of tech going into this, and even with stuff like the you know the screen and everything. Um, I, I'm not probably interested in the dock to play it on tv uh as much as you are um i'm definitely into that i know the docks can be expensive with everything in there i i think some people would get sticker shock i got slice sticker shock at a hundred dollars on that um but like i said i'm not the main audience for that i'd rather just get the console for the most part but maybe the dock would be fun as a way of, i don't know uh the cables are what are they 15 dollars each for the multiplayer cables um if you have only to buy one and your friend buys one, that's or that's not that bad. Fifteen um, bucks is the standard price for a link cable. I mean, yeah, it's not bad. I think if they were, I'm just doing marketing pat. If they were like ten dollars, I think you move a ton of them more. But fifteen bucks, it's. I mean, I'm not sure how much use you're going to get out of them anyway o o over time. With with you know, we do. Our I'm I'm one of like. I'm one of those people that actually still plays my Game Boy and knows people who still play Game Boy. So that's you're all how, in on that. That's how Yokoi Kids came about. No, what I'm getting at is I will probably order the cable, but uh, the amount of times I've linked up and played multiplayer Game Boy games, and I'm a big Game Boy fan, is like I can count them on one hand. Well, the original Game Boy, the, I mean, they pushed that with the F11 race, and I don't remember like my friends or cousins who had that ever really doing multiplayer However, Game Boy, you can put this on the dock and wirelessly attach up to four controllers and play that way. Okay. That's when that's why the dock's a lot more money because you're doing a lot more stuff like that. That's that's interesting. 
So I remember this is like 2,800 games between all three systems out of the box. And then that's not even including the Potential. MGP, the Lynx, and the Game Gear stuff. I will buy the Lynx adapter. Like uh, the Lynx, I love the Lynx. The, the the actual tech on the Lynx stinks. Like the actual like like the button layouts and and where the D pad is, it's not the best. Um, I'm I'm excited for this. Um, black or white for you, Ian? Tough call. Real fucking tough call. I haven't decided yet. I think the white looks awesome, but here's where my concern... We'll get dirt on it from your fingers? <laughs> dirt from fingers, but um, having... Like, I loved the original white DSs. What happens is... Um, see how the uh, there's that glass, you know, that thick glass over the, Gorilla the, glass. the screen? Um, I could see little bits of dirt and dust leaching into that, and really? those crevices are hard to clean. I see it on DSs all the time. Like, things that are, like, perfectly white, there's always a way for dirt to get in there. So, I don't know. Maybe they took care of it. Maybe it's, like, vacuum sealed, you know? It's, we'll see. Um, I would well, that doesn't happen on iPhones, does it? I, don't have, I never had a white iPhone. I don't own one. No, actually, it doesn't. It's fine. We figured that out, Ian. Yeah. This is in 2003. It's fine. I'll flip a fucking coin. I think this is going to hit a lot of different markets. Um, this is going to hit people like me. It was like, wow, this is the first product of its, of its kind to me. Uh, it's going to hit the people that are into the music. I'm, I'm Not as many of those as the game players, obviously. But it's also going to hit even people that be like, you know what? I still love Game Boys. I, I, I still play in my you know now 15-year-old SP. I want an update. Yeah. Update. Update. I want a, I want a, a different solution, and plus SPs are spendy to find, especially a backlit SP are spendy. It's to find them. especially right now during COVID. Yeah. A, a, a one hundred and one Game for? Boy, a, a one hundred and one model Game Boy Advance SP is going to easily run you a hundred bucks. Wow, they're up to a hundred. This be like Easy, sixty. It's going to easily run you a hundred well, bucks right now. Uh, one hundred and ten. Buy it now. You're right. One hundred and ten for. And they're in crappy condition. They're beat up. The LCD screen's not going to be as good. The buttons are mushier on those. Um, right. When you, when you start looking at the fact that the old hardware is going to be expensive and yes. not as nice, the $200 it's on this bad. does not seem as bad. It's not bad. I mean, I own a few, obviously, SPs from this. I used to buy the 101s. Whatever, whatever I saw with the swap, I'd buy the 101s there. But no, um, yeah, I'm down. I'm definitely down. We'll, we'll play some. We'll play some Faceball 2000. We, we have to. Yeah. Some, have a nice day. Let's well, Super Nintendo one. All right. Uh, did we, we hit all the main points on this? We did. I made sure of it. Uh, you made sure of it. Oh, real quick. I looked up the GBA Studio, uh, GB Studio 2 beta trailer. It looks like uh, there's like probably there's built in. Uh, you can get, do a shooter, do like a Pokemon looking uh, overhead looking RPG sort of style, a platformer. So it looks like probably out of the box. You can pick probably your game type and get going from there. It's probably how the maker studio works there i just wasn't aware of, it, of gb studio before but it's it's obvious it's great to partner with them because then everyone wins and you can make your own games so all right uh what was it august 3rd it goes on sale for pre-order and it comes 8 out it comes out uh i guess i guess q1 next year may it, it's may yep it's a long wait but whatever well we're in strange times i'll be turning 40 again wink this year doesn't count this is a do-over year You'll be turning 40 again. Okay. I didn't have a party. <laughs> Did nothing. I, was, I sat around by myself. 